Linda, can I borrow your mic thing? All right. So today, I'm going to be being a little bit vulnerable with everyone. And I'm gonna be sharing some of my lockdown struggles from 2020 to now. Okay, it's not quite what you think though. So, my personal journey, 2020, March, President Saul Ramaphosa puts our country into lockdown. Level five, isolation, churches close, life as we know it has radically changed. Um, the journey of the four other people in my family, heartbroken, devastation, isolation, restriction. Me, as an introvert, yes! I got to stay home with my garden, with my kids, with a good book. Life was simple. I hate to admit it, lockdown wasn't quite so bleak for me. As an introvert, I could settle into this. I, I could make it work. Yes, I missed seeing everybody's faces and that kind of stuff, but you know, it, it was good. And then every time um, President Ramaphosa would extend it, like my family would be like, oh, and I'm going, yes, a little bit longer. You must see my place. I've got this veggie garden going. Life is styling. But, so yeah, I had happy kids. I had Paul. Life had slowed down. We went for walks as a family. We would take the dogs for a run. It was actually not quite as terrible as, as everyone thinks. Okay, so our family did fight like cat and dog. We rubbed the edges of each other, and we've done big regroups as a family and are learning how to interact better. So it wasn't all all good, sometimes there were a lot of walks around the yard just to keep sane, but, but, it's, but yeah, I, I could settle into this lockdown story. Um, we discovered stuff about ourselves, we discovered stuff about ourselves as a family, and um, it was during this time of level five and four lockdown that I discovered my favorite Sunday morning outfit, and I'm going to show it to you today, only five other people have seen this, but this is my favorite Sunday morning outfit. This is how Sunday mornings happen in my happy world. This, and this, sorry, thank you. This is the full Sunday morning ensemble for life to be good, for me to be blissfully happy. A good cup of coffee, my robe of righteousness and my TV with a Sunday morning sermon. I can settle into this. I can, like seriously, people, it's good. This is hot. A lot of lockdown was in winter, remember? So, yeah, then as things changed and we start engaging and church starts up again, like, I must be honest, there were moments when I was like, I don't wanna go to church. I've settled into the comforts of doing it online, you know, staying at home, still fully engaged with God, I don't actually want to leave my little cocoon of comfort, my robe of comfort. So let me give you some of my excuses. I had it waxed, hey? these are like what goes on in my head. Do not hold this against me because I am pretty sure at least one or two of these you guys have thought to yourself. I already know what Paul is preaching on, so I don't need to go. It's more important to spend quality time with my kids while they're home. You know, that's the kingdom thing to do. It's not that I haven't attended enough church in my life. Some only go to church at Christmas and Easter. Philip, I'm here every single Sunday. I'm, on, I'm like on 2039 already in attendance. Um, I can just as easily watch it on TV. There is COVID, you know, but just so you know, COVID is not in the shopping centers where I go grocery shopping. My life is so busy right now. I've got so much on my plate. I can't afford those 90 minutes to go to church and pre-meeting on Thursday, like really, people, life is amping up, I can't do this. Then I did the maths and I worked out, it's 90 minutes a week to go to church versus 10,080 minutes of me living my life. Priorities, um, how's this one? But my bed is the perfect temperature. I know it's hot or cold or windy or something else out there. It's like, life is bliss in that moment. Um, I've had such a busy week, no one carries as much as me, I'm entitled to rest. I'm in freedom under grace. I'm not under law that I have to go to church. All of these are going through my head, people. I can like pick up a random one any Sunday morning. How about this one? I just don't want to. <laughs> I just, just don't want to. Of course, I never say this out loud to my family. 
Church is 45 kilometers away. Hello? And there's only so many seats, and other people need it more. So I will sacrificially stay home with my coffee and my, my robe of comfort for you. <laughs> That's how I roll. <laughs> so, and then Paul kind of gives me the hairy eyeball and goes like, babe, get up, you gotta go. Then I'm gonna let you in on another secret of how I actually get through this process. You know, in Matthew 26, when Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane, you know that scripture? And um, he says, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. I kind of do that on my pillow. <laughs> Got to get up. And it says, my father, if it is yet possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet, not as I will, but as you will. And you know what? Jesus is who I wanna live my life with and model after. Jesus didn't wanna go to the cross. It wasn't something he volunteered for. It wasn't something like whoop, whoop, cross day. It was like, it was something really difficult. It was something requiring of something of him for other people. His feelings, I don't want to go, Father. Can this cup pass from me? But then it's his response after that that, that challenges me so much. He says, not my will, but yours. At the end of the day, everything from getting up on a Sunday morning to go to church, phoning someone who you know needs a word of encouragement, everything of our Christian walk actually comes down to not my will, but yours, Father. It's, it's, it's that's what it is. And Jesus showed us the ultimate in how he did life. Um, and I'm not comparing Jesus dying on the cross to me getting up on a Sunday morning and getting dressed. It's, I got a way to go. But it's the heart. It's the heart of dying to self for the sake of others. But you know the part that really gets me? It is not dying to self for the sake of others because I realize when I come to church, much as I don't really want to in that moment, I have never, ever, ever in my entire life gone to church and gone home and thought, well, that was a giant waste of time. I always come home encouraged, uplifted, having grown, having just had an attitude shift. Sometimes the world hasn't changed radically, but I've changed a little. I have never been in God's presence and not come away for the better. But sometimes I struggle to get myself into his presence. I, I resist coming into his presence. And it's like, it feels like it's this giant struggle in, in humankind. The very thing we need is more of God. And when we get dry, the very thing we want to do is pull away from God. And we come up with 101 excuses of why we shouldn't encounter him, why we shouldn't press in, why we shouldn't dial in. And you know, when you think about it, the reason God asks us to fellowship, to pray, to fast, all these different things that he asks of us that we like, yeesh. He's not asking us for him. He doesn't need us to come to church. He knows we need to come to church. He's doing, he asks it of us for us, not for him. We feel like we're doing God a favor. We feel like we're doing the rest of the church a favor when we either come to church or pray for someone or, or drop a line to someone who's going through something. We feel like such a superhero, but it's actually for us that he asks it of us so that we would grow, so that we would encounter him. Um, this has been a struggle for me in lockdown because environment has created that I can withdraw, that I can settle into my comfort. Comfort becomes easy. And now the struggle is, how do I break out into the more that God has for me? And you know, as I've spoken to my friends and stuff, this is, this is a lot more prevalent than we actually think. Um, so in, I wanna just find this passage of scripture. Okay, so Romans 8, verse three. Who moved it? I love the fact that God knew this was coming and he had all his answers ready for me before I could start questioning. So Romans 8, verse five. So those who live according to the sinful nature or the flesh have set their minds on what nature desires, a good cup of coffee and a dressing gown. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. Remember Lizzie had that word this morning about the Holy Spirit starting to break out, the Holy Spirit starting to activate what God is doing. We need to set our hearts, our minds, and our actions on what the Holy Spirit is about. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God, and it can't do it, um, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. 
those controlled by what they feel, by what they want, cannot please God. You, however, are not controlled by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and anyone who doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But Christ in you, in your body, but if Christ is in you, in your body, hang on. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who lives in you and get you out of bed on a Sunday morning. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die, but if the spirit is put to death by the misdeeds of the body, you will live, because those who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. Because you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. Did you check it with Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane? How did he start that statement? Father, if this can pass from me. Straight away, he anchors in his position. He is the son of God. When we face these struggles, of putting our flesh to death, of putting our desires and our comforts to death. We start with, I am a daughter of the Most High God. That is my identity. That is who I am in Him. And I am filled with the Spirit and that empowers me to put aside my feelings, to put aside my, my desires in the moment and follow hard after my Father, because that's my identity. But you know what? This is what gets me. I think following Jesus, we often think it's like, well, I haven't murdered anyone. I haven't, you know, we look at the big, the big sins or the big bad stuff that you go to jail for. And we think, well, I haven't done that, so I'm doing okay. But actually following Jesus is in the little things of choosing our attitude, choosing our actions, choosing to do our Father's will over our own will. That is the win. You know, um, it's a wrestle. It's hard. Like, it's an everyday struggle of getting distracted in what we're doing in our everyday life, keeping the world ticking over, and still having to orientate back to what does the Father want? What does He require of me? And let that be the baseline that I work from. And that is not something that we do once on a Sunday or in a moment. It is a 24 hour, if we are awake, we have to choose the Lordship of Christ. If we are making decisions, we have to filter through. Um, I'm so thankful that Jesus didn't go by his feelings, that he went by what the Father called for him. So everyday choices, surrender, put our flesh aside. Um, so what does some of that look like? So some of the challenges of what God calls us to do is like, but I don't want to forgive. Such and such has hurt me, such and such has disappointed me. I don't feel like forgiving them. That is a moment of lordship. That is a moment when you have to put your feeling aside and follow after what God wants and live through the spirit empowering you to do it, not by the flesh. Because I'm telling you, the flesh is gonna let you down every time. That cup of coffee and dressing gown, it's comfortable, but it's gonna get you nowhere. It's the Holy Spirit that's gonna bring life. What about this one? I don't wanna change. That's just who I am. I'm gonna stay rigid in my ways. It's, this is just, it works for me. Or how about this one? I don't wanna get involved. I've been involved before, I've been hurt, I've burnt out. We've got all the excuses. And, and we settle in that space and we let that feeling, we let that, that emotional thing determine the destiny of our life as opposed to putting our feelings under the will of the Father. Those are my battles. It's not hard not to murder someone. I've kind of got that one waxed. There were times in lockdown, it was touch and go, but other than that, I think that sin um, got going. But flip, dying to self, putting aside my feelings, my desires, my, my ebb and flow of life for the sake of something greater, that's my struggle. Um, it comes down to lordship. I have to recalibrate back to Jesus. And the beautiful thing is when we refocus back on Jesus, his Holy Spirit comes and empowers us and energizes us and inspires us. And I mean, I was saying to Paul last night, there's a moment, I don't know if you guys will recognize it, it's when you know, you know when you're in the perfect will of God and life is just 
It's just good, and there's like this tingly feeling inside where you know it's like heaven has kissed earth. This is, this is a beautiful moment. And there's nothing like that in God's presence, and that's what we need to pursue. Um, so part of my journey with wrestling to kill myself in terms of my flesh, not myself, um, I've realized I have a giant throne in my life that I'm very comfortable on, and it's a daily struggle to get off it and let God on it. And one of the moments that was hard for me was when I'd been married about four or five years and I got depression. Nothing related to being married, it's totally disconnected. I went through a season where I got depression. And I remember in that process, like I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. I didn't, I didn't want to engage, I just wanted to pull the blanket over, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just wanted to stay where I was. And I had people around me who helped me, who came alongside me and encouraged me. My feeling was that I wanted to stay in that space. That was the feeling. But the feeling was not good for me. The feeling was not going to take me to a healthy place. It was a valid feeling, it was my feeling, and it was a very intense feeling. But the way I had to break free from that, I had to go, what is truth? And the feeling must line up with truth not truth line up with my feeling. Because my feelings can change like cyclone de moina. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how Paul stays married to me. Like, I can go the full gamut of emotions in a five minute period. So me anchoring onto feelings is not a good thing. So I had to, in that moment, go, I don't feel like getting up, I don't wanna get up. But I know it's good for me to get up. I know I need to get dressed, brush my teeth, put on some clothes, and just walk out this bedroom. And you know what? That was my mission accomplished for that day. It was not much more than that, but I started to train my mind and my body that my feelings were not gonna govern me, truth was gonna govern me. But it came down to a choice, because there were months that I lay there when I didn't make the choice. It comes down to choices that only we can make in the moment, whether we're gonna follow hard after our Father, when we're gonna live in that river that is flowing with beautiful water, or are we gonna stay in our robe of comfort instead of our robe of righteousness? Um, so feelings, they're not friends or foes, they're just something that we have to manage and govern, and we need to lead our feelings. We need to take control of them, we need to recognize, if I'm feeling in the morning I don't, want to go to church today. I'm <laughs> comfortable, my bed is good, Egyptian cotton sheets, aircon going, good cup of coffee. I feel like I want to stay there. But then I go, hang on, truth is, it's good for me to connect with people. It's good for me to go out. The bed will still be here. You know the other thing, it just so baffles me that there are times when I feel like a superhero getting here on a Sunday morning. Seriously, sometimes I feel like you guys should be like waving flags when I walk in. I mean, it's early in the morning, I am dressed, I am conscious, there has been a lot of coffee involved, but I am not a seize the day kind of person. Paul wakes up at five and he's ready to rock me, I approach things gingerly. So the fact that I get here and I'm conscious and I can make coherent sentences, be impressed people, this is not my natural state. <laughs> but it's choices, and you know what? I've realized that I don't come here because it's what God requires of me or because it's like, you know, you said you wanted to get born again, it's, this is part of the tick the box. Because to be honest, when we were in lockdown, I was doing that a little bit. I'd listen to the church service, quickly tick the box and get on with life. I didn't actually engage. I have come to realize through this season that God requires this of me because he loves me, because he wants a connection with me, because he wants to talk to me, he wants to change me, he wants to mold me, he wants to be my friend. And so he keeps creating these environments where I can connect with him. Environments like coffee with a good believer friend, community around me that strengthens me, that challenges me, that, that pushes me. This moment right now is such a big hug from my heavenly father that he ordained that this would happen that we could be together here as brothers and sisters and just encourage each other. Community is a gift from God to us and for us. It's not a burden and it's not a schlep. This thing that's happening right now is a gift from the Father because he knows what's good for us and I've had to change my mind on a, on a lot of that. Um, then how's this other portion of scripture? Where's, 
So I'm going to read this from the Passion, um, the Passion Translation. So read it in your normal Bibles, but I just like the way this explains it. So Galatians 5, 16 to 23, it says, as you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. Coffee is good. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you our self-life, our, our flesh, our personal desires. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. The Holy Spirit is the one who defeats the craving of your natural life. Tap into the Holy Spirit, don't run from him. So then the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation of the Spirit. But when you are brought into the freedom of the Spirit of grace, you will no longer be living under the dominion of the law, but soaring above it. And what are the cravings of the self-life? This is a horrible list coming up, people, that I'm referring to. They are obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God. And that can be anything from career, from sports, from, there are a lot of things we chase after other than God. Manipulating others to get what we want, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, flip, there's been a lot of those in this season, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, yo, <laughs> being envious of the blessing of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom of God? But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine. This love is revealed through joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. We've got these two choices, like as we are as life is starting to unfold into the new normal and all the phrases that are being bandied about, as momentum is being picked up, we're getting to choose what does our life look like going forward. And I have been challenged that in the lockdown, I got to settle into my comfort. I got to put on my robe of comfort. And it was comfortable. I, I could park there. But you know what, I know if I park in that space, I will never count for eternity. And I know that despite COVID, despite any of what's going down in life, there will come a day when I will stand before Jesus and I will give an account for my life and for the things that he's called me to do and the things that he's equipped me to do and inspired me to do and dreamed for me to do. And I don't want to stand before him and say, but Lord, I was in my dressing gown with my cup of coffee because I didn't feel like it. Because that's where I can get when I let my feelings govern my actions versus the spirit of truth. So, yeah, the, so the challenge for me today is God wants connection with us. He wants fellowship with us. His purpose is for us to connect with each other and with him. Like Paul said last week on the Valentines, God sees us. He knows us. He wants connection with us. That is why we do what we do. And the very thing that pulls us away is like the thing that we pull away from. We don't wanna go to church. We don't wanna do the prayer meeting. It's like we feel controlled and hemmed in by these things. But those are the very things that will bring us into freedom that will help us find our spacious place. I'm, I don't know if you guys are following on the, the Thursday prayer thing when Paul goes on at six o'clock. It's very awkward, let me tell you, because he's sitting on the patio and I can hear him it's like I'm in the next room. And so I can easily like go off and do stuff and put on my TV and that kind of stuff. But I've actually had to go, I'm gonna go on the Facebook -y thing. I'm, I'm gonna do that tech stuff. And I'm gonna watch and I'm going to engage. I'm gonna stop what I'm doing. And just for that moment, stop the crazy and focus on the togetherness of what God has called us to. It's hard to pick up that phone and turn it on. But I can tell you every time when it's finished, my spirit is lighter. I'm glad that I did it. But those choices, I want to be, create a habit of making choices of engaging with my father. 
I want to make a habit of creating choices that are engaging with the gift that he has given me to strengthen me and pull me closer to him. So there are times when I don't want to go to church. I'm going to be real about it, but I'm also going to be real that I'm not going to roll over and play dead with that struggle. I'm going to end up, my desire is that one day, although my robe of comfort is very nice and soft and cuddly, you must try these ladies, very, very good. This I'm going to be before my king, not in a robe of comfort, but in a robe of righteousness. And I'm going to have done it walking alongside each and every one of you in a community that the Father has gifted me with because he wants me to be closer to him, to know him better, and the method that he's created for that is us, to grow together, to learn together, and to love together. So I'm not getting it right every day. It is a struggle. Some days are harder than others, but I just wanna encourage each and every one of us, dial in with what God is doing. It's hard getting that momentum going again. It's hard wanting to engage, but he is so worth it. Our heavenly father is so worth it, and he's promised us his Holy Spirit to enable us and make it stronger.